Okay, everybody, this one's on trapezoids and kites. Uh, I'm going to go kind of fast, so please pause when you need to to write things down and or rewind when you need to. Okay, this one's going kind of fast here. Okay, trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So the parallel sides are called the bases and the non-parallel sides are called the legs. Okay, so here's an example right here. The parallel sides are called the bases and the, and the other two sides are called the legs. All right. An isosceles trapezoid is when the legs are equal. So here's a picture of an isosceles trapezoid where the legs are equal. All right, uh, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment that connects the midpoints of its legs. So right there, see it's connecting the midpoints. See how the midpoint divides this leg into two congruents, and this midpoint divides this leg into two congruents. So that is called a mid-segment. Okay, a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides but opposite sides are not congruent. Okay, consecutive means uh, next to each other. So these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent, but the opposite sides are not congruent. If they were, it would be a parallelogram. Okay, so it's a kite when it's like that. Okay, so draw a Venn diagram of this. So here it is right here. So this is all quadrilaterals. Here's all parallelograms. Note, no trapezoids are parallelograms. No kites are parallelograms, no kites are trapezoids, and no trapezoids are kites, but they're all in the quadrilateral thing right here. Okay, isosceles trapezoids are trapezoids, and they're all quadrilaterals. All right, and there's some parallelograms uh, that aren't rectangles or squares or rhombis. Okay, we did this one uh, the other day, or in another lesson. All right, okay, so here's some theorems, you guys. Base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, so uh, right there you have. <clears throat> right here, excuse me, these two base angles are congruent and these two base angles are congruent. And this one says the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are, are congruent. So here, and it has to be isosceles, you guys, so both of these have to be isosceles trapezoids. Uh, BD is congruent to AC on this isosceles trapezoid. Okay, the other uh, place where diagonals are congruent are on rectangles. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, diagonals are congruent on isosceles trapezoids and rectangles and squares too, but squares a rectangle. Okay, uh, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the base and half the sum of its bases. Okay, so this mid-segment right here is parallel to the two bases and that mid-segment right there, the MN right here, is equal to half the sum of the bases. Okay, it's just the average of the two bases. So I'd add this one plus this one divided by two and that would give me the length of that one. Okay, and it's also parallel. All right, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So um, right there, and we talked about this in a, another uh, lesson prior to this. Uh, the diagonals of a kite are right angles right there, perpendicular. Okay, um, a kite has exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. So there they are right there. Only one pair of these guys so right here that are congruent to each other. Okay, these guys are definitely not congruent, B and D. Only A and C are, okay, on the kites. All right, so is this quadrilateral uh, a trapezoid, okay? And here's all the coordinates right here. Remember, a trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides. So we need to check to see if we have one pair of parallel sides. Here's our slope formula, you guys. Remember, slopes, if they're equal, then they're parallel to each other. So here's the slope of all four sides, RS, and then ST, and then TO, and then finally OR, okay? I'll do them one at a time. I'm going to go fast. There's the slope of that guy. There's the slope of that guy, and then y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And then when I simplify those, uh, let me simplify a little bit more, I get, here we go, negative 1 and on, on two pairs of them. So yes, it is a trapezoid because only two pairs are, are equal to each other or parallel. This right here just means it's a vertical line, you guys. So if you graphed them, I bet if you graphed those points, you probably could see that it's a trapezoid. But, you know, the math behind it is, is this stuff right here. So, okay. Uh, all right, so find the measures of all these angles right here. Okay, remember, it's a, this is an isosceles trapezoid, so this angle equals this angle right here. It's 50. And since these lines are parallel, this angle M and angle L right there, they're called, it depends on which kind of book you have, like either consecutive interior angles or same-sided interior angles, whatever the name is, they're supplementary right there because they're between parallel lines. So if that's 50, this is 130 because they add up to 180. Okay, so, so if you know one of them, and I saw at least trapezoid, you know all of them. Okay, here's another one right here, 118. So same thing, these guys are, this is 118, and these guys are the supplements of 118, so 62 and 62. All right, 
find the length of the mid segment. Okay, here's the first one. Okay, remember the mid segment is the average of the two bases. So add them together, divide by two, and you get 14 on this one. Okay, on this one, you get a decimal on this one. You get uh, 66.5. Just average those two bases. Okay, so is a EFGH a kite, and uh, or it says it is a kite, and find the measure of angle G. Okay, kite is a quadrilateral, and quadrilaterals add up to 360. So uh, what I do is I add those two angles together right there and get 140, and then take those away from 360, and I get 220. And remember, kites, these two angles are always congruent to each other, so if they add, add up to the rest of it, 220, then I take it and divide it by 2, and each one of those is 110. Okay, same thing on this one right here. Sorry, it got kind of squished in. Should have moved it over, but I didn't. I'm going to add up the 150 and 90 to get 240 and take that away from 360 to get 120. And then again, 120 divided by 2 tells me each of these congruent angles must be 60. All right. Okay, use the Pythagorean theorem, the P theorem, to find the sides of the lengths of the kite. Okay, so here's this kite. Remember on kites, you have right angles right there. So I have so two right triangles right here. I have this right triangle on the left, so and then this right triangle here on the right, and it says find the sides right here. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So here we go. So this side squared plus this side squared equals x squared, and then this side squared plus this side squared equals y squared. Okay? I'm going to crank it through. There's uh, 4 squared and 6 squared. Adds up to 52, square root of 52, and then remember factor trees. This is how I tell my kids how to simplify radicals. You find the prime factorization of those numbers right there. And you get these factor trees right there. And then you need two numbers on the inside that brings one number on the outside. So that simplifies simplifies to 2 root 13. Okay, this next one over here, I'm going to do this in one step because I showed you what I did over here. So I'll talk you through it. But it all that's all together. Okay, just squared them, add them together, square root of 180. And you can see 180 broken down over here. And here's 180 right there. Two twos and two threes come out as one two and one three. And you get 6 root 5 as the final end on that. Okay, almost done. Uh, find the value of x. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is another mid-segment, you guys, because this side equals this side, so this is the midpoint, and this side equals this side, because that's the midpoint right there. So this 7 equals this plus this divided by 2. It's the average of the bases, so that 7 is the average of the two bases. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that fraction. Subtract 10, and then you divide by 2, and you get x equals 2. Okay, same thing on this one, except you got a little decimal action. That 18.7 is the average of those two bases. Okay, multiply by 2 and combine like terms. 5x plus 12x is 17x. Add 1.7 to both sides and then divide by 17 and you get uh, 2.3.